Hug Sameach, everyone. I can't see myself there. You can fix that if you don't mind. And um, welcome to the Seder. We're welcome to um, my mom's house. This is very exciting. It's, I think, 14 years since I've uh, last was at this table for a Passover Seder. And I think Mara's first time ever, which is pretty darn exciting. <laughs> Um, I hope you have a Seder's uh, plates at home and um, you can see we have ours here and we have several things on the Seder plate. We have, what is this? What is this, Daniel? Oh, bitter herb. This is our bitter herb. This is our maror. We have more maror here. We have some people use the chrein, the horseradish. And here is, what is this? The lettuce. Lettuce. And we use lettuce because it's bitter, right? That's, and we remember the bitter taste and how terrible it was in slavery in Egypt, and we have this. This is a bone, a shank bone. What does this remind us of? Um, that's why I let us out with a strong arm. With a strong arm, right? As Roa, right? This is that's the, the kind of arm like going like this, scooping a mouth and swallowing a mouth. That's right. What else do we have on here? I can't pick it up because it's really sticky and gooey, but it is haroset. And haroset is apples, and uh, we make apples and wine and cinnamon. And it's supposed to remind us of the mortar that stuck all the bricks together, that we were forced to make bricks. What else do we have here? We have parsley, and we have potatoes. And these are going to be for the karpas, right? The vegetable that we're going to dip in just a few minutes. And then the disgusting egg. The disgusting egg, which is roasted. Right, it's actually cooked, and the reason it's there is to remind us of the sacrifice that one of the sacrifices that we would offer on the holiday. So there's the Passover, the Seder plate, which we'll put right here, and we can look at it and refer to it, and we'll even eat from it in just a few minutes. The Seder means order, right? Seder is order. Yeah, the Seder, we have to remember the Seder of the Seder. You have to remember the Seder of the Seder. How do you remember the Seder of the Seder? Do you have a song to remember the Seder of the Seder? Do you have one? Yeah, should we sing a song to remember the Seder of the Seder? Here we go. Kande shur chatz, kar pas ya chatz, magid rachza, mozi matza, maror korech, shulchan orech, tzafun barech, halel nirza. Wow, that's a lot. What are we on? We're on the first one, which is Kadesh. Right, so everybody should fill your kiddish cup with wine or grape juice. And we'll prepare for the first cup of wine and we'll say the kiddish together. And then we will say the shehechianu together and then we will drink our wine and we're gonna lean to the left. We're all gonna lean to the left and recline because we're free people. We don't have to eat really quickly and hurry up. We have to, we can relax for a little bit. So that's what we're going to do when we drink our wine. Everybody's invited to raise their glass for the first cup. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Borei peri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Asher bachar banu mikol am Viromamanu mikol ashon Vekid shanu be mitzvotav, vati ten lanu Adonai Eloheinu biahava, moadim le simcha, chagim uzmanim le sasson, et yom chag hamatzot hazer, zman chirutenu mikra kodesh, 
Next, Kadesh. Orchatz. <laughs> Orchatz, we wash our hands, which I think has it even more of a uh, special meaning this year, right? Some people wash with this tiny little um, bowl of water, others nowadays with Purell and other things. So I think that when we wash our hands with no blessing, Right, we're doing this before we eat, right, um, as to prepare for our vegetable, which we're about to eat. We do that with no blessing. I think we'll um, keep in mind our own personal hygiene and the health and safety of ourselves and also everybody else who we're coming into contact with now and even going forward past the pandemic. Kadesh or chatz, karpas, karpas, the vegetable. Now that we've washed, we can take our vegetable. Some people use the potato, some people use the parsley, and we can dip it into the salt water. And we dip it, we dip twice tonight, right? The first time we said was the parsley in the, or the, the karpas in the salt water. And the second time, do you remember, was the maror, in the charoset, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But we dip in salt water, why? Why salt water, Daniel? To remind us of the tears um, of slavery. Yeah, because your tears are salty, yeah. right? And we remember the salty, the taste of the tears by dipping in the salt water, and we'll say the blessing for the vegetable together. There we go. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Bore pri ha adama. Appetizer. There you go. Oh, sorry. There you are. Next is the one that you want you children want to pay attention to, yes? Kadesh or chats karpas. Ya chats. Yachatz, we have the ma beautiful matzah cover here that I've never seen before with three matzahs, right? And we're going to find the middle matzah right here. Here it is. This matzah has a special name in Hebrew. It's also called lechem oni, which is like affliction bread. Not because of what it does to you after eating matzah for a whole week, but because... Um, it's, um, you know, quick to make, and it reminds us of our slavery in times of affliction. And it's also called lechem oni, because usually we make um, hamotzi on two full loaves of bread. But on Passover, right, we are remembering the slavery, uh, and it's a little bit sad and diminished um, to remind us of, the, of that slavery. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the matzah, the middle matzah, and just like people who don't always have enough, we're going to take the bigger piece and we're going to put it away in a bag. You want to put this one away in the bag? What bag is this for? It's for um, Afi... the Afi Komen. The Afi Komen. The Afi is going to be our dessert that as long ladle. as you guys find it after dinner. So that ladle I will find. Later you will find. I found it in like two seconds yesterday night. Oh, we'll have to find a better place tonight. Don't worry. Okay, good. And we'll put the middle matzah back away. This matzah is supposed to remind us of the slavery, right? How do you say slaves in Hebrew? Avadim, right? Because avadim do avodah. Avodah is work, right? Avodah kasha, in fact, it was very hard work 
that our ancestors were forced to do in slavery. And so we read, sorry? With no, with no money. So we uncover the matzahs and we remember that time as we sing together Avadim Hayinu. Can you help us? Avadim Hayinu Hayinu Oh oh Ata Benechorin Benechorin Avadim Hayinu Ata Ata Benechorin Benechorin Avadim Hainu Tata Benechorin That's very beautiful, but I sang the wrong song because we were supposed to sing about the matzah, right? Halach ma'anya, right? The, um, the bread of affliction, right? Do we know a song about this? Halach ma, halach ma'anya Deachalu, deachalu avatana Be'ar'a, be'ar'a de Mitzrayim Be'ar'a, be'ar'a de Mitzrayim Kol dichvin yeitei ve'yecho, kol dichvin yeitei ve'yipsach. Hashta hacha, today we are here, l'shana ha'ba'a, in the next year, ba'ara de Yisrael, may we be in Eretz Yisrael, or at least um, around, around the tables with family and friends, and so many people who we are uh, missing this, this holiday, and we have been all, all year. Now we are uh, now we are slaves. The Shana Haba Benechorin. May we all be uh, free in so many ways. We begin the seder by um, the youngest people at the table asking the questions, and there are traditionally four uh, questions, right, which we go about answering. Uh, and the whole seder itself is meant to inspire questions, right? We're we're supposed to ask why we're covering the matzah and uncovering the matzah and taking the plate away and putting the plate back and filling up four glasses of wine. Why, why, why? And mostly it's so that you'll ask, why, why, why? So that it inspires conversation and discussion about the exodus from Egypt and how those ideas that um, have been passed on from so many generations all the way from, from what now, six, 4,000, 5,000 years ago um, until today um, remains so vibrant. So, um, we have traditionally four questions, but it's not, it's a minimum, right? Just like the four cups of wine is a four cup minimum. The four questions are also a minimum of four questions. And so um, might want to think of ourselves to ourselves, if we were going to write the four questions again this year, what would we ask, right? What types of questions and how can we relate to these questions specifically this year uh, in a time when we've been separated physically and um you know, emotionally for maybe even as a result for, for so long. Um, so I wonder, you know, thank God though, there's lots of other ways that we're able to get together and we can be each with each other on Zoom. You can be here with um, me and my close family in Colorado and I can be there with you at the same time. And that's pretty neat. And so I wonder what things we would like to carry on, right? When what ways um, are we going to carry this time you know, eventually the pandemic is going to be over and we're going to move past this. Um, but what things will we like to keep uh, as part of our um, traditions and, um, you know, uh, treasure about this time that we've had? Um, maybe we realize the importance of being home and enjoying, you know, some solitude and, and less hustle and bustle of work and, and, and so on. Um, you know, and also, I think what things are we really excited to get back to? and get over with um, when, uh, when we can resume life as normal, um, you know, and who is gonna be the first person you're gonna run and hug and who is gonna be, uh, what is gonna be the first thing you can't wait to get rid of uh, after this pandemic is over. So those are a couple of additional questions that we can ask this year. Who's gonna ask us the four questions from our Haggadah? Uh, Everybody together? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, why not? All right, here we go. Ma nishtana halayla hazemi kol halaylot mi kol halaylot shebechol halaylot anu ochlin chametz umatsa chametz umatsa halayla hazeh halayla hazeh kulo. 
We uh, say that there are um, many children at the table and we start with the children asking the the questions and we address each one, um, but the answer to the questions uh, comes in, in a very personal way. And that's why it's so important to um, make our, our Seder new and unique uh, every year uh, so that there's a different aspect and a different um, uh, viewpoint that we can uh, use uh, to learn something new. Uh, and also we know that everybody has different learning um, styles, right? And personalities and learning differences. Uh, and the answers and the way that we uh, communicate and tell the story to one person uh, might be different based on their sensitivities and their um, talents and, and so on than it would be for another person. So we tell about four different uh, types of children at the Seder and each one asks their unique questions and each one gets their um, tailored answer, right? And Steve Sadman, who's here with us always says, what about the fifth child? And uh, Steve, I don't know if you can unmute yourself, but um, shake your hands if you, if I'm really telling it wrong, but I think Steve once told me about the fifth child um, who isn't here, uh, who isn't present at the Seder and that we're not able to, uh, to uh, share Passover with. And I think that that's uh, particularly um, meaningful this year. Um, I, once in, in, in that's the first time in 14 years that I've been uh, here at this Seder, um, but I have to tell you also, it's the first time in uh, more than a year that I've gotten to see and hug my mom and um, my brother and my sister-in-law and my niece and my nephew. And um, really it's taken a, a quite, quite the toll, right? And um, we've had to celebrate last Passover uh, separate uh, and I have, we have to separate this Passover uh, even separate uh, still. Um, and, uh, you know, reaching out to those uh, who are not here and staying in connection and contact um, is, uh, is, is uh, super important and paramount and also challenge, it presents its own challenges. And we all long for the day um, that we can embrace like my mom and I did what two nights ago uh, for the first time. You, you know, uh, a lot of people know my mom and how wonderful she is and how, what an amazing hostess and something she, but not a lot of people know something about her. Everybody at this table knows, but not a lot of people know that she gives incredible, incredible hugs. <laughs> and like really amazing yeah. hugs. True, says Daniel. <laughs> uh, and I've missed those hugs. And I, our prayer is that all of us are able to experience those uh, hugs with loved ones um, very soon um, in a, that safety and, um, and uh, really uh, express the love that we feel for each other in our hearts every single day, but haven't been able to, uh, to express physically in some time. So we remember the fifth child uh, at the Seder and also the four traditional children who are the Chacham, who is the, the wise child. And what does the Chacham say? Chacham mahu omer, Mara? Loud. Chukim. Chukim. 
At Chem. What are these laws that God has commanded you? And what do you tell the smart child, Daniel? The wise child, do you see that? What do you tell him? Can you read the wise child? What does he say? I want to know about the different kinds of mitzvot, mitzvahs that Hashem, our God, told you to do. Since this child wants to learn, you should teach him all the laws of Pesach up to the last law of the Seder, that we are not allowed to eat the it's after the Afi The Chacham, the wise child, just like you and you and you, always ask questions, 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 and you have to answer them, right? And you have to tell them everything they want to know and just feed their thirst for knowledge. But then there's other type of children, and these children are known as the Rasha, right? Or the wicked or the rebellious or the um, whatever, uh, however you want to describe. There's a few pictures, rent artist renditions of the different children on the screen, right? The Rasha... What does the Rasha say, Mara? What is this to you? Why are you doing this? Says the wicked child, says the rebellious child. And what do you tell the rebellious child? You tell him, what do you say? What does he say? What do you, what do you go to these trouble of doing these mitzvot? mitzvahs. He thinks that the mitzvahs are only for you, but not but not for him, because he doesn't want to be a part of us. That proves he doesn't believe in the Torah. So you should give him a very sharp answer. Tell him that the Torah says it was, it was because of these mitzvahs that Hashem did miracles for me. Yes, and the wicked... When I left Egypt, yes. right? Uh -huh. So the wicked child says, I'm not part of you, right? What is this about? What do you do? What, why is it? Why do you do this? And you say, wait a second. You're part of this family too, mm -hmm. right? To the wicked child. Yes. And then the, the tam, the simple child, what does the tam say, Mara? Mazot. Mazot. What is this? What is this about? And what do we do for the tam? We tell him, Bechozek yad. That God took us out from Egypt with a strong, hand. strong arm, right? That God can, is powerful and can do anything, right? And that's the message that we tell the simple child, right? That we have to, to, um, to learn and have emunah and have faith and belief in Hashem who can take us out even from our own troubles today. And the last child is the she'eno yodea lisho, the one who doesn't know to ask. And what did they say, Mara? That's right, nothing at all. He doesn't even know how to ask the question, right? He doesn't even know how to ask. And what do we do for the She'eno Yodea Lishol, Daniel? The one who doesn't know how to ask? You have to start him off. As the Torah says, you should tell your child on the day of Pesach, it was because these mitzvahs that Hashem did miracles for me when I left Egypt. Very good. And the screen has some uh, very funny Zoom children. My favorite is the simple child. I can't read it from here, but I think the simple one says, hello, am I on? I can't hear you. I can't see you. Right? Very cute. So we begin when we tell the story, right? The children want to know. Everybody wants to know what's the story. We begin from, well, the beginning, yeah. right? From, yeah. right? Number one, right? Well, what yeah. is number one? Who knows one? I know one. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem in the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows two? I know two. Two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows three? I know three. Three are the fathers and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows four? I know four. Four are the mothers and three are the fathers and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows five? I know five. 
Five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought, and one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Who knows six? I know six. Six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought, and one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Who knows seven? I know seven. Seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Who knows eight? I know eight. Eight are the days before of bris, and seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe had brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Who knows nine? I know nine. Nine are the months before of birth, and eight are the days before of bris, and seven are the days of the week, and six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Who knows ten? I know ten. Ten are the commandments. And nine are the months before a birth, and eight are the days before a birth, and seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mamas, and three are the papas, and two are the tablets that Moshe dropped. One is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows 11? I know 11. 11 are the stars in Yosef's dream, and 10 are the commandments. And nine are the months before a birth, and eight are the days before a birth, and seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows 12? I know 12 are the tribes of Yisrael, and 11 are the stars in Yosef's dream, and 10 are the commandments, and 9 are the months before a birth, and 8 are the days before a birth, and 7 are the days of the week, and 6 are the books of the Mishnah, and 5 are the books of the Torah, and 4 are the mothers, and 3 are the fathers, and 2 are the tablets that Moshe brought. One is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Who knows 13? I know 13. 13 are the Midot of Hashem, and 12 are the tribes of Yisrael, and 11 are the stars in Yosef's stream, and 10 are the commandments, and 9 are the months before a birth, and 8 are the days before a birth, and 7 are the days of the week, and 6 are the books of the Mishnah, and 5 are the books of the Torah, and 4 are the mamas, and 3 are the papas, and 2 are the tablets that Moshe brought, and 1 is Hashem, 1 is Hashem, 1 is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Wow. That was quite the song. Mitchila of day avodah zara ayu avoteinu. And the beginning of our seder starts with humble beginnings, right? From the beginning, our ancestors were idolaters, and now we are um, gathered together around this table to uh, celebrate each other and to serve God Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, who saved us from all of these troubles that we're about to, to describe. And before we do, we're going to raise our glasses in a toast, in a, in a um, toast of celebration and thanksgiving to Hashem, which we're not going to drink, but we're going to raise our glasses and we're going to sing together Vehisha Amda, which Mara has a really wonderful new tune for. So we'll fill our glass, yes, to make sure it's nice and full. Thank you. That's good. And we'll raise our glass together. And Mara will lead us in Vehisha Amda. Loud. Vehisha Amda, Lavotenu. Vehisha Amda, Lavotenu, Velanu. Shalo Echad, Bilad, Omed, Aleinu, Lechalotenu.
Akadosh Baruch Hu Matzileinu Matzileinu Mi Adam Vehi She'am Dalavoteinu Vehi She'am Dalavoteinu Vilanu Shalom Beautiful. Shakoch. That was very nice. Say, Ulamad, go and learn. Ma bikesh Lavan Ha'arami la'asod li'yaakov avinu. Who was Lavan Ha'arami? Lavan was Rebecca's brother, yes. And he was an Aramean, yes. And Yaakov went to go see Lavan. Mara's been looking at Mara because she's been learning about this all year. <laughs> and he worked for Lavan because he was escaping his brother, Esav, right? Jacob and Esav. Jacob flees, does, steals the birthright from Esav, flees to go live with Lavan. And he falls in love with Lavan's daughter named? Rivka. Now your name? No, no, Rachel. Rachel. He fell in love with Rachel. He worked for Lavan for seven years to marry Rachel, but it turns out Lavan was a tricky person and he tricked him into marrying Leah. Leah instead. And he married Leah and he had to work another seven years for Rachel. And ultimately uh, after uh, marrying both Leah and Rachel, um, Yaakov leaves um, Lavan and ultimately ends up where? Ultimately, Yaakov ends up in Egypt. That's how we get to Egypt, right? That's the beginning of the story. That's how the Jews ended up in Egypt. In fact, the Torah says, Arami oved avi, that my father was a wandering Aramean, right? Probably Jacob. Vayered Mitzrayma, he went down to Egypt. Vayagor sham b'metema'at, and he lived there, they lived there in small numbers. They were just a small family. And there they grew into a goy, Gadol Atsum Virav. They grew into a very big and powerful nation. And then a new king came over, uh, came into Egypt, into power, or maybe it was the same king who changed his mind toward the Jews, uh, and life became less comfortable. What happened with life in, in uh, Egypt for the Jews? They started to be oppressed. They started to be um, discriminated against. They started to even be enslaved Right? and forced to make bricks and all kinds of things for the construction in Egypt. And it was uh, the Vayarei the, Uotanu, the Egyptians oppressed us, right? And they forced us to do hard work. How do we say hard work in Hebrew? Avodah, avodah kasha. Very hard work. And the um, Israelites were so... Um, uh, I guess, oppressed and bogged down in their slavery. They were given very little time to, to you know, no free time, very little time even to eat and to sleep. Um, and all they had to do was to work. And their idea of freedom or the idea of freedom was so far-fetched to the Israelites, if you can imagine. All we could do was and cry out to Hashem. And finally, guess what happened? Hashem he heard our voice, right? We say that every day, Shema Kolenu, that God hears our voice and hears our prayers. And we really believe that, that, we, um, that when we pray, that it changes us, right? And we're able to communicate with God. And our ancestors did just that, communicated with God. God heard their voice. And he saw the way that we are suffering. And uh, all of these different um, terrible ways in which we were suffering. And God, in his um, um, uh, showing great power, right, and great moments of awe, took us out from Egypt, right? Something that our, they, they, our Israelites, if you can imagine, as slaves thought was impossible. Right? God takes us out. And that's what we're doing tonight is celebrating the miracles, right? That how much the world can change and how much God can um, affect change in the world so, so suddenly. God took us out from Egypt in, in incredible ways. With a strong hand. 
an outstretched arm, right? Umora gadol, otot uvmoftim, with all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders and great to do. There was even newspaper articles written about it, apparently. Uh, and God takes us out from Egypt in this unbelievable uh, fashion. And now God could have taken us out of Egypt uh, and just boom, right? Snapped his, uh, his celestial fingers and we'd be out from Egypt. But God chose to do it in a very mm, um, dramatic way, mm. right? Which is to show Egyptians and to show Pharaoh who's boss. Yeah. So By, yeah, with all these plagues, right? the blood and the frogs and the lice, all of these things, right? But the whole time, he kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. He kept making Pharaoh um, more and more stubborn, right? And why? Well, we say that God did that so that he could show his power, right? So that we could do all of the plagues, that we have to have all of the plagues and all of the signs and the wonders so that everybody knows um, that God is God. And when we talk about the plagues, Right, um, we, we actually take out, we pour out from our cup. And why do we do that? Because the plagues are not describing the suffering that our people had in Egypt, right? We describe the suffering with the salt water and with the maror that we experienced in Egypt, but the plagues um, affected mostly the non-Jews, right? The um, Egyptians, many of them, very innocently Egyptians, right? And I think that this um, uh, teaches a very important concept in our Seder and in Judaism in general, and probably, I guess, all of humanity, um, that we care about the suffering of, of other people, right? That when we take out from our cup, um, that our cup can't be overflowing as long as there are other people uh, who are suffering. And so when we think about these plagues, the ancient plagues is in, context with maybe modern plagues. What are modern plagues that we can think of? Well, we're living through a plague, but um, because of, as a result of this, you know, whole pandemic thing. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely a plague. Definitely a plague, but also um, associated with that, um, people are suffering, right? People are suffering having lost jobs or lost income, or um, people are suffering with illness or sickness of family members, not to mention just of uh, coronavirus um, altogether and, and the loss of life and the, but also even people who are sick with other ailments who aren't being able to um, be cared for and visited by, by relatives and the hospitals and in the, um, the care facilities and all these places, all these people who are experiencing um, this year and scary moments alone, right? And um, even if it's not us, even if it hasn't touched us uh, personally, but we all know people uh, who are suffering and we all know that there are people uh, who are suffering and because of that we can't be completely joyous um, ever uh, that we always have to be uh, attentive to the suffering of others so when we do the plagues and we remember uh, all of those the blood and the frogs and the lice we also remember the modern plagues that we're suffering and um, we take out from our cups in honor um, and in respect uh, for those who are going through troubling times even today. We invite you to take your pinky or your uh, fork if, uh, if you like, and we'll pour out from our cups as we say the 10 plagues. barad <laughs> Arbe Choshech Makat Bechorot. Rabbi Yehuda used to like to make a acronym of these, and uh, he uh, said them in three uh, words: Detzach, Adash, Vahav. Rabbis used to um, go on and on and on uh, explaining and expounding and understanding these plagues and how they affected um, the lives of the Egyptians and the, um, the Jews and, and, and everybody around and even said even one plague was counted as four plagues or as five plagues and they, they would talk because the more we, we discuss uh, how this is relevant in our lives, 
um, the, the more hareze meshubach, right? The, the more praiseworthy that is. So I encourage you among uh, your family who you are with uh, right now at, uh, when we're having dinner in a little bit, uh, that we discuss um, these plagues and um, the way um, that God always saves the day, even when things uh, seem dire and hopeless. And that's what the song Dayenu is all about, right? The Hebrew word die means what? Daniel, Daniel learned this yesterday. Die, enough, right? Enough. Because I pushed him on the swing a little bit too hard and he said, Uncle Steve, enough, enough, right? Die, die. Um, because Dayenu means enough, right? We say it would have been enough as in it would have, yeah. It would have been enough um, if God had done just this for, if God had just taken us out from Egypt, but not taken us to Mount Sinai or just taken us to Mount Sinai. It's a show of gratitude. It's enough. It's enough. You've done enough for me, right? That we say that when we're grateful to somebody. You've done enough. You've done enough. But we also say enough the way that Daniel meant enough, like enough. That's enough already, right? We've had enough, right? Thank you, but enough, right? Must speak, we say uh, also, or suficiente, right? Like enough, like that's, that's enough. Thank you very much. And so I think we mean it in both ways, especially this year, right? Dayenu, we're grateful for all that we have uh, and for all of the things that, that we're still able to experience and, and the love that we're able to share with each other, but we're also um, enough, right? It's we've had enough of this and we've had enough of um, being apart and we've had enough of weird uh, holidays and, and all kinds of things. So I think we mean it both, Dayenu, it would have been enough, thank you, uh, or Dayenu, uh, enough, enough already uh, as, we, as we sing together on, as we can project on the screen, we have a custom at our house. I think it's a Sephardic custom that we um, use uh, green onions and treat them as whips uh, to whip our neighbors when we when we sing uh, Dayenu. Some people use leeks, but we use uh, green green onions. We'll sing together on, it'll be on your screen, yes. Elu elu hotsi anu hotsi anu mi mitraim hotsi anu mi mitraim Dayenu. Day Dayenu, Day Dayenu. Dai Dayenu, 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 Dai Dayenu, Dai Dayenu. If God had brought us out from Egypt but not executed judgments against the Egyptians, if he had executed judgments against the Egyptians but not against their idols, if he had executed judgments against their idols but not smitten their firstborn, if he had smitten their firstborn but not given us their wealth, if he had given us their wealth but not split the sea for us, die. Oh, die, die, no, die, die, no, die, die, no, die, no, die, no, die, no, die, die, no, die, die, no, die, die, no, die, no. If he had split the sea for us, but not let us through onto dry land, die. If he had let us through onto dry land, but not drown our oppressors in it, if he had drowned our oppressors in it, but not let us in the desert for forty years. Die. If he had led us in the desert for 40 years, but not fed us the manna, die. If he had fed us the manna, but not given us Shabbat, die. If he had given us Shabbat, but not led us to Mount Sinai, die. Oh, die, 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 if he had brought us to Mount Sinai, but not given us the Torah, die. die. If he had given us the Torah, but not brought us into the land of Israel, die. If he had brought us into the land of Israel, but not built the temple for us, die. die. Oh, die, 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 God did all of these things for us, so how much more so uh, should we be grateful that all of these things, all of our needs, not only our needs, um, but also um, even some, uh, some things that we could never have expected are always fulfilled for us. And we say dayenu uh, in the terms of gratitude and also dayenu in terms of we can't wait for things uh, to go back to normal so that we can continue uh, to celebrate Passover. Definitely.
like yeah with a lot of people together huh well, celebrate anything celebrate any, anything well that's a good point right a lot of people haven't been able to celebrate like bar mitzvahs and weddings and birthdays and all kinds of things and yeah Purim right we missed a lot of a lot of um, fun stuff this year with family and friends Rabban Gamliel used to say that if someone doesn't explain these three things at the Seder then it's basically like they didn't have a Seder at all because you have to tell the story and the story includes uh, some props. What are the props? Well, the Pesach. What is the Pesach? What is Pesach? What does this represent? Not only the arm, but also the dinner, right? The dinner that we would have had on Passover night, right? On the Seder night, what did they eat? They ate a, 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 an, a, an animal that they had slaughtered just that day before um, and roasted it whole on a spit and they, that's what they ate together for the Passover dinner, the original um, Passover dinner. And we do this, uh, we don't do a, pass, a sacrifice now. Uh, so we have this on our plate to remind us of the Pesach offering. What else? Matzah, who has matzah? Can someone hold up some matzah, Mara there? Why do we eat matzah? Um, because um, while they were running away, um, the bread didn't have time to cook, so it turned into matzah instead. That's right. They didn't have time to let the bread, bread rise. So all they made were these flat little matzah cakes, which are pretty good as long as you only eat them yeah. in small doses once a year. Yeah, just not, <laughs> not like a thousand a day. Yeah. 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 And finally, the maror. You have to explain the maror. Here's some maror. Why do we eat maror? To remind us of how bitter it was being a slave. Yeah, you know about Maror, right? We eat Maror because she Maroru, right? Israelim, right? The, Israel, the Egyptians made the lives of the um, Jewish people, the Israelites, bitter with hard work. Yeah. And behold, Darvador, in every single generation, we all have to see ourselves as if we are personally leaving Egypt, right? We say what God did for me when I left Egypt. Um, but not only that, every single year, we experience slavery, we experience persecution. And every single year, we also experience um, uh, miracles for which we can be show gratitude and, um, and also celebrate. So in every generation, we are supposed to see ourselves as if we personally have left Egypt. And the Torah says, the vincha. We have to teach our children and teach our children that Ba'avur Hashem Li, that say Mitzrayim. When I left Egypt, this is what God did for me. And these are the miracles that are that um, I recognize in my life today. And hopefully our children learn that value, that um, uh, gratitude, and uh, also um, uh, 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 joy uh, is our important Jewish values and carry them through into adulthood also. Finally, we uncover the matzah, or sorry, we recover the matzah. Yes, and all of the, the props. And we say, lefichach, therefore, we have such an opportunity, such, not an opportunity, an obligation to show praise and thanks uh, to Hashem for having uh, led us out of Egypt. And every single year lets us gather together uh, in um, relative um, closeness and happiness and health. And we say our praises to Hashem, and we, we do that by offering words of, of praise of the Hallel, both now and also a little bit after dinner. So we'll sing together from Hallel. Bet Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, Bet Yaakov me Amlo es. Bet Seit Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, Bet Yaakov me Amlo es. Haita, haita, Yehuda lekodsho, Yisrael mam shilotav, haya merav, haya nos, haya arden yisov leachor, eharim rak duchelim gevaor, kivnei tzon, malecha hayam, kitanus, Ayarden, Ayarden, Tis of the Achor, 
Eharim, Tirkidu Helim, Give out, Give Nate Son, Me leave me a don, Holy Alex, Me leave me. Eloha Yaakov, Arofchi Atzor, Agamayim, Chalamish, Lemayno Mayim. We'll raise our glass together for the second cup of wine. As we say, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe. Asher ga'alanu vega'al et abotenu mimitzrayim, who redeemed us and our ancestors from Egypt, v'higiyanu lalai lahazeh, and brought us to this night, le'echol bo matzah umaror, to eat matzah and maror. Ken Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe abotenu, yagi'enu l'moadim u'l'ragalim achirim. May God also bring us to lots of other special times and holidays. Haba'im riklikratenu l'shalom. Semechim v'vinyan irecha v'sasim v'avoratecha, we should be happy and rejoice. That we should we be uh, rejoice and all have the Pesach offering and enjoy Pesach together in the future. And we'll thank you with a new song about our redemption. We'll sing together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei pri ha'gafen. L'chaim. Coming to an exciting part. We get to wash our hands again. Why do we wash our hands again? Anyone? Because this time we're actually going to make a mozi. So this time do we say a blessing or we don't say a blessing? You want to wash? Yeah? Okay. okay. So we'll wash our hands. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's get Got it. Good, good. Now you can use that. There you go. Take that. I will say the bracha for washing our hands. You want to say it with me, Dan? But, and Ellie? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Al Nitilat Yadayim Amen Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min HaAretz. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Al Achilat Matzah. You don't have to take a bite, man. You got to take a bite. <laughs> this is the shmura matzah, the handmade, and it has a particular taste, unique taste. Unique to like cardboard boxes, right? <laughs> maror, we're going to take our maror. Some people use the horseradish. Some people use the lettuce, something very bitter. And you can give it a little dip in your haroset and then shake off the haroset. And we'll say together the blessing. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat maror. In remembrance of what used to happen with the, the uh, in the temple times when they actually had them um, Pesach offering with the meat, um, he but Hillel would make a sandwich using matzah and maror and the barbecued lamb. I bet it was pretty delicious. But now we remember that sandwich, 
by putting together the matzah, just the matzah and the maror, um, with a couple of pieces of matzah, uh, matzah, like a sandwich, even though we don't include the meat because we don't have a korban Pesach, but we eat it together like this as a sandwich, just as Hillel did. There's no blessing. Now, friends, it's time to come to the dinner portion. I'm really sorry that I can't share my mom's uh, cooking with, with you <laughs> because it's really delicious. Um, but I hope that um, you have uh, all some delicious food to eat. We're going to sing together Chad Gad Ya, and then um, we're going to let people unmute themselves. Feel free to hang out and enjoy um, the meal together or, or hang out and, and uh, socialize for a little while. And um, we'll sing Chad Gad Ya, and then uh, dinner will be served. I want to wish everybody a Chag Kasher Vasameach. Have a really wonderful rest of your Chag. And um, I hope to see you online. Uh, this week and also uh, next week for um, services and Yisker. We'll sing together. Chad Gad Ya. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya. Dizabin Abba Bitrezu Zeh Chad Gad Ya. Be'ata Shun Ra, Te'achla Legad Ya. Dizabin Abba Bitrezu Zeh Chad Gad Ya. Chad Gad Ya. Beata kaba woof woof the nashach le shuna meow de achla le gadia de zabina babitra isuze had gadia had gad Beata ho trap de hika le chalba woof woof the nashach le shuna meow de achla le gadia de zabina babitra isuze had gadia had gadia Beata no rap de saraf le chutra de hika le chalba De nashach le shunra, de achla le gadia, de zabina babitra zuze had gadia, had gadia, de atamaya, de chaval le nura, de saraf le chutra, de ika le chalba, de nashach le shunra, de achla le gadia, de zabina babitra zuze had gadia, had gadia. Beata Torah, Beshata le Maya, De Chava le Nura, De Saraf le Chutra, De Eka le Chalba, De Nashach le Shuna, De Achla le Gadia, De Zabin Abba Bitrezu Zechad Gadia, Gadia, Beata Hashochet, De Shachat le Torah, Mu Shata le Maya, De Chava le Nura, De Saraf le Chutra, De Eka le Chalba, the Nashach le Shuna, the Achla Gid Gadia, the Zabin Abba Beatriz, the Chad Gadia, the Atta Malahamavet, the Sara, the Shachat le Shochet, the Shachat le Torah, the Shatta le Maya, the Chaval le Nura, the Sara le Chutra, the Eka le Chalba, the Nashach le Shuna, the Achla le Gadia, the Zabin Abba Beatriz, the Chad Gadia. We attack a dosh parahue, the shaha la malahamave, moon, a shaha litera, the shata limaya, the chava lenura, the saraf le chutra, the hika le chalba, the nashach le shunra, the achla le gadia, the zabina babi trezu, the chad gadia. Chag sameach, everyone.